In a weird chain of events, it is coming out that Jeff Jarrett is making his return to TNA Impact Wrestling. Um, and the last we heard from Jeff Jarrett and TNA, Jeff Jarrett came back. Um, he won the King of the Mountain Open Challenge. Uh, I believe that was at a Slammiversary show. Uh, from there, Dixie Carter put Jeff Jarrett into the TNA Hall of Fame, which normally is held during Bound for Glory weekend, but just was held on a random impact in the middle of the summer for no apparent reason whatsoever. From there, I believe they did some sort of angle where Dixie Carter was taken out, and the only person to be left in charge was the old owner, Jeff Jarrett. And from there, Jarrett turned into the heel owner, where basically he had his outsiders of Global Force Wrestling wrestlers show up. And although when you do look at the Global Force Wrestling roster, when you go to globalforcewrestling.com, which is still open, um, they didn't really send the best high caliber wrestlers um, that they could have because of the deals that a lot of people have set up where they are um, not exclusive to a certain wrestling brand, but they're exclusive to only doing television. So it ended up being the, you know, the uh, island of misfit toys of, of past WWE wrestlers. Um, I think there was, uh, you know, PJ Black, who was Justin Gabriel. Um, was it Chris Morwinski, who, who used to be, um, oh shit, now that I thought, it took me a second to think of his real name, and now I forgot, oh, Chris Masters, um, uh, Brett Myers, Kurt Hawkins, uh, I think Lady Tapo was one of the people there, and it basically set up a big match on Impact, which was going to be Global Force going against TNA Impact, um, with uh, the, the, the ownership of TNA on the line. Uh, when it all fell down, Team TNA, who was able to put together an all-star roster, um, I think the Wolves were out there with Bobby Lashley, um, uh, you know, Charlotte's ex-husband, um, shit, I forgot his name. Um, he was on the team, and they just made the TNA guys, honestly, because they wrestle in TNA, they, they made them look like huge stars, defending off the Outsiders, even though the Outsiders were, like I said, the Island of Misfit Toy Nobodies. Um, once all the cards fell on that angle that was that was ran, it was revealed um, that in order to get Global Force Wrestling on the largest stage possible, which was on TNA Impact's weekly television, Jeff Jarrett gave his ownership stake to Dixie Carter to run the angle where he made his company look like it was second to TNA. Although they did get in a shot here or there, they did win a few matches, and they did get their name out there on national television, even if it was only on Destination America at the time. They thought that that was really going to help Global Force Wrestling get their amped show picked up. Um, so, you know, Jeff Jarrett gave away everything that he had. Um, I don't know how much he would have cashed in with the sale of TNA with Anthem Media, um, taking over the uh, shares that were given to um, a Smashing Pumpkins uh, main guy. Uh, I, I don't know if he would have been able to cash in on that at all. But um, I, I thought that honestly, Jeff Jarrett was holding on to his ownership stake, even though he was starting up a new company. Because of the fact that somewhere down the road, whether if it was, you know, the, uh, WWE bought the, uh, the, the tape library, there would be some money left over for him to try to get something out of it. But Jeff Jarrett, he hasn't been part of the creative process. He hasn't been part of the, you know, television show. He hasn't been a star on there in a long time. So it didn't really make sense for Jarrett to hold on to this. But there obviously had to have been something that he did. But, um, you know, he... He, he made a gamble. You can honestly say that with Global Force Wrestling not having television here at the start of 2017 and Jarrett returning back to TNA um, with Dutch Mantel to take over some sort of a backstage leadership role, that looks like Global Force Wrestling is a dream that is dead. Um, where they go from here, I'm hoping, is that Jeff Jarrett does not return to being an on-screen television star. You know, it doesn't matter if, if it's him as a wrestler or just him as a leadership role. I would make sure that Jeff Jarrett does not turn up on television for, honestly, for a long period of time. Dutch Mantel and Jeff Jarrett do have a lot of, you know, smart thoughts about the wrestling business. Um, Jeff Jarrett has never been the best um, guy running a company, 
But then again, if you think about the beginning times of TNA before um, investors came in with that being Panda Energy and Dixie Carter taking over, um, some of the things that Jeff put together really was the building blocks of a good company, no matter if there was tons of jokes about you know TNA being shut down in a week or two weeks or how long they were going to make it. Here we are, I, I think, or 2017, TNA is almost a 15-year-old company, and people didn't think they were even going to make it 15 shows um, back in the day when they used to tape at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Um, I, I don't really know where there is for TNA to grow. It's hard for me to remember exactly where TNA is on my television dial. I can tell you, honestly, there's been three shows throughout the last year. Um, those are being the, the shows that really featured the Hardys, um, and, and deletion shows, those have been much watched television. Almost anything else that has gone down on TNA, I have no clue what it's been. I don't know when their next pay-per-view is going to be. Off the top of my head, I don't know when the last pay-per-view that they did run um, was run. Um, I, I haven't been showing this company a lot of love since AJ Styles walked out the door. Um, I know that Matt Hardy's been doing a lot of great things. I've, I've seen a lot of it on YouTube or on Twitter where people have posted clips. But the last time I've watched a, a total show, I don't even really know when that's going to be. Um, I, I hope TNA a lot of uh, good thoughts that they can pull it together and, and find something. But honestly, with them losing Spike, with them losing Destin Destination America, with them being on Pop TV... A lot of things have come down the road, and I've really been thinking that they were done. Um, that, but you know, every uh, you know, there's always somebody who jumps in at the last, the last, uh, the last minute. This time being, and the media. I think they own the Fight Network, and that's the reason why they want to have them is to have the television on their show. And it's a lot like Spike TV owning Bellator, um, where they can just you know have this tape library, and they can make old shows. They can make new shows out of old shows and uh, put together things along the way. And hopefully TNA doesn't become too big of a headache for this company and they're able to fix something. All along the way, I, I kept on saying, I hope they find a way to save this and they found a way to save it. So, you know, putting Jeff Jarrett and Dutch Mantel in charge honestly probably makes the best sense. I don't really know who else is out there that's a free agent that could come in. Um, there was a lot of people when it came down and and and, and they found out that you know TNA wasn't going to be getting sold, um, that they, they left the company. Dave Lagano was one of those guys who was one of the head writers uh, for Impact. Uh, but, um, you know, other than Vince Russo, who's out there? So Jarrett and Dutch Mantel probably is the lesser of two evils. I don't know really what they have to work for, but hopefully Jeff Jarrett. I know that the Global Force roster got picked through pretty good, but... Mickey James, Bobby Roode, um, you know, a lot of those guys you know, now, even with 205 Live, you know, you've got the Bollywood boys working for WWE. Hopefully there's people out there that haven't been exposed to TNA television that are still looking for it. That there'll be some fresh faces Impact could bring in and maybe build some new stars around. So that's one good thing to hitch on to, to them moving into charge and um, hopefully being able to fix this and uh, make Impact must watch television again because honestly I do believe that TNA has been sort of a uh, alternative to WWE but at this point WWE is monopolizing wrestling so much that it, it's honestly pushed me back from the table it's not that I don't like Raw I don't like Smackdown I don't like 205 Live or NXT but I honestly it feels weird but I feel bossed around by WWE that they want me to watch Sunday on the pay-per-view. They want me to watch three hours on Monday. They want me to watch two hours on Tuesday. They want me to watch two hours on Wednesday. It's just a lot of fucking wrestling. And it just makes me seem like the only thing that I could do that I could hope for change is not watch. And that's what I've been doing.